بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a pleasure to be with you to teach this book which I have recently written. As you can see, it is called selections from the glorious Quran and it contains eight <coughs> selections <coughs> from the Quran from different parts of the Quran and each lesson <coughs> is uh, made up of four sections the first section is the text of the Quran mere text of the Quran but it has been taken from the uh, Mus'haf al-Madina, Mus'haf al-Madina published by the King Fahad Quran Printing Complex. But there is a special feature and that is I have redistributed the text because the text usually the words are close to each other but I have distributed the, the words in such a way that they are really clear for those who want to read easily. <coughs> that is the first second. Second section is uh, lexical and grammatical uh, explanations. Uh, here I explain, I uh, write the f first line of the selection, write the translation in, to English and then comes the lexical and grammatical analysis. Uh, if there are single words, they are explained, and grammatical uh, constructions are also explained. Uh, then I go to the second line, and third line, uh, up to the end of the uh, verses in the selection. The third uh, section is more uh, no, additional notes, additional notes, where I have um, added certain verses of the Quran, ayat, additional ayat, and uh, information also. Sometimes I mention the meanings of certain words, Quranic words in the modern Arabic language, so that you get in touch with the language of the day also. And the last section is the <coughs> exercises. Uh, inshallah, we'll do that all, all, the, all that. And I would request you to read the lines, the ayat, which are not only the ayat that, that are mentioned here, but ayat which go before and after this ayat so that you get a complete picture of what is being said in the uh, text. <clears throat> now before we uh, start the book I would like you to <clears throat> I would, I'd like to give you a brief uh, uh, explanation of the Quranic orthography that is the spelling and the signs and symbols that are mentioned in the, that are used in the Quranic text because most of the people don't know this. The Quran has got its own orthography, its own spelling and its own signs and symbols which are not used in normal Arabic writing. So I'll start with that because we are going to read the texts. And in the text, uh, you, you, you'll come across uh, these uh, signs and symbols and uh, uh, spellings which are not usually used in the normal Arabic uh, writing. So to be conversant with these uh, uh, peculiarities, I'll give you an uh, explanation of these things. Quranic orthography. Now the Quranic text that we use 
If we take a page of the Quran, any page, it contains four elements. It contains four different elements. They have been, of course, synchronized now, but they are four different elements. The first element is the consonantal text of the Quran. Now, this is the consonantal text of the Quran without vowels, only consonants. Of course, long vowels are incorporated, like waw, alif, ya. These are incorporated. These are called uh, huruf al-illa, they are huruf. But the short vowels, fatha, wama, kasra, and all these, these are not there. Not even the dots. Now this is the beginning, this is the, the beginning of Surat uh, Al-An'am. The first two words are not here, probably in the first page, in the previous page. Uh, Alhamdulillah, alladhi khalaq as-samawati. Alhamdulillah, alladhi khalaq as-samawati. No dots here. Wal arda wa ja'ala. See, this is jim ayn lam ja'ala. الظلمَاتِ والنور ثم الذين ثم الذين كفروا كفر واو this ألف كفروا بربهم بربهم يعدلون this is نون هو الذي هو الذي خلقكم من طين ثم قضاء أجلا. So Alif is here and Jim is here. Next, next, rest of the word. ثم قضاء أجلا وأجل مسمى عنده. دال هير and هير عنده. ثم أنتم تمترون تمترون. وَهُوَ هُوَ هُوَ اللَّهُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ تَاهِيَ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ الضاد هيئة يَعْلَمُ This is يَعْلَمُ سِرَّكُمْ وَجَهَرَكُمْ Now this is the consonantal text which was prepared by or under the supervision of Uthman رضي الله عنه and that is why it is called the Uthmanic text, or Uthmanic codex. Al-Rasm al-Uthmani. Al-Rasm al-Uthmani. Please be clear that Al-Rasm al-Uthmani does not mean a style of writing. It means the text as was prepared by Uthman radiallahu anhu. Not by him, but by his uh, uh, calligraphists under his supervision. So the first element, when we say such and such text confirms to Ar-Rasm al-Uthmani, what does it mean? It means that the spelling of the words confirm to the Ar-Rasm al-Uthmani by the text, uh, confirms to the text prepared by Uthman radiallahu For example, as samawat has no alif. If you write as samawat, wow, and then alif, complete alif, it does not conform to the Uthmanic text. But if you write without the alif, or a short alif after wow, then it conforms to the Quranic, uh, Uthmanic text. So the first element in the Quranic text is uh, Rasm al-Uthmani, which is the consonantal text prepared by Uthman The second element is the dots which were added later on. For example, Khalaqa, Kha has no dot. Kha has no dot. Qaf has no dot. Samawatta has no dot. Now in those days, the Arabs knew the Qur'an, the Muslims knew the Qur'an by heart. It was only a, a support. But most of the people, most of the Sahabas, knew the Qur'an by heart. So, they, 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 they can easily read the text. So the dots were added later on when the 
uh, when, when uh, non-Arabs entered into Islam and uh, they could not read this text, dots were added. That is the second, it's called Al-I'jam. I'll write this. The first is Al-Ras Al-Uthmani Al-Ras Al-Uthmani The second is Al- Al-I'jam Al-I'jam is Masdar from which uh, conjugation? Which form? Yes, from the fourth form, A'jama Yu'jimu I'jamun I'jam means putting the dots That is why a dotted letter is called Harfun Mu'jam it is a it's a mufrul harf mu'jam harf mu'jam is a dotted letter like like jim and kha but ha for example is ghair mu'jam harf ghair mu'jam undotted letter dal is ghair mu'jam dal is mu'jam ra is ghair mu'jam zai is mu'ajam. Seen, ghair mu'ajam. Sheen, mu'ajam. So, al-i'jam is the process of adding the dots to the letters. The third element is Al-Wapt Al-Wapt means the vowel points like Fatha, Dhamma, Kasra Madda, Shadda all these are included in Al-Wapt in the Indian subcontinent they use the word al-Arab, Arab, but it's not correct. <clears throat> but Arab, you must have learned in the Arabic grammar, is to to find out the the correct ending of a noun or a verb in the sentence. For example, "Indi kitabun" is marfur. "Qara'tu kitaban," read a book, is mansub. وَجَدْتُ هَذَا فِي كِتَابٍ I found this in a book. It's majroor. Now this is Arab. The changing of the endings of a noun or a verb, mudhari' to show its function in the sentence. That is Arab. Which in European uh, 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 language is called declension. Declension of a noun. <coughs> There is Arab, but calling the, uh, the vowel marks, vowel points as Arab is, is, is not very correct. So it is called Adopt. Adopt. <coughs> These are the uh, three points the, the uh, consonantal text prepared by Uthman, عنه, which does not have either dots or the vowel points. Later on, all points were added, dots were added. Later on, all points were also added. In the beginning, all points were not uh, like the one we have, lines, but there were dots also. Dots in front, dots below, and dot above. That is why, if you remember in Urdu, the fatha is called zabar. Zabar means above. Zair, Zair means below. Pesh means in front. So they, these were, these indicate the positions of these points in the writing. They were dots, but in a different color, different ink. 
red dots above is fatha below is kasra and in front of it was wama but later on developments <coughs> uh, were made and we have different forms in ajam there are very little difference uh, in different countries there is only one difference which i would like to mention in morocco qaf is one dot above one dot above is qaf one dot below is fa so if they want to write qif which means stop road sign they write like this if you go to morocco be careful <laughs> you may go right into the arms of a policeman moroccans read qira uh, which is called warsh warsh so they write also in this writing qaf uh, one dot above and fa one dot below and we in the uh, quran complex king fat quran punk complex we have published quran according to warsh also so we get lot of letters from different parts of the world saying you don't know how to read the, write the quran <laughs> you write one dot for qaf <clears throat> so we have to explain to them that this is how the moroccans write with regard to adopt there are different styles of dot in in the indian subcontinent there is one dot which is not very different but it's different from the take the from the dot system that is used in arab countries turks they have a different type of dot and warsh in morocco it has completely different uh, kind of dot it's all systems different system but it doesn't doesn't change anything the fourth element alamatul waqf alamatul waqf means punctuation marks these are also different countries have different systems india and pakistan they have got a different system in arab countries they have got a different system and these are of recent origin maybe about 200 years old 250 years old not very old let's to guide the reader where to stop where not to stop but in the indian subcontinent they have got so many signs that one get gets confused there are a lot of signs and the, some of the signs are contradictory one sign says you stop the other sign says don't stop <laughs> in the king fat quran complex uh, quran we have got only five three or uh, five or six i explain to you later on when we come to that alamatul waqf so these are the uh, four elements uh that can that are contained in the quranic text so the the very important thing is that it should confirm to the arrasb al uthman now ulama have permitted a single line or one or two lines if you are writing an article and you want to quote the quran if you write a line or one or two lines ayat you can use you can write these ayat in the ordinary normal arabic script one or two lines is allowed but not the whole of the quran or whole of the surah it should confirm to the arrasm al uthmani because here there are volumes have been written about 
where Alif has been added, well, where Alif has been omitted, where Waw has been omitted, where Waw has been written. So there's a whole lot of works, books written. So we can be very sure, even if we don't find here, we can be very sure that this little word was actually like this. There's a wall there, there's no alif there. So it has been well guarded and you can go to the books and find out the real word, <coughs> real uh, status of the word. <coughs> that is why ulama do not allow that the whole Quran be written in the modern script. Because more modern spelling it differs from place to place. In Egypt there is a system in Syria, it is a system. In Egypt, for example, Mi'atun, 100. Egypt, Egyptians and most of the Arab countries, they write with an alif. You must have seen this. Mi'atun. But in Syria, they write like this, without alif. In Egyptian, Egyptian Arabic, Ya is written without dots. In Syrian, with dots. If you, if a Syrian sees a word like kursi, for example, return with a dot, you will get very confused and take a spin. Even if it is in a book, you will put two dots. But Egyptians don't write. Without, they write without dots. So there is a lot of difference between different countries, Arab countries, with regard to writing. So if, we, if you begin to write the Qur'an according to the normal Arabic script or normal Arabic orthography, then there will be confusion. That is why it is best to stick to the, the ancient text as all uh, works of legacy. Now next we come to the signs and symbols that are used in the Quran, <coughs> Quranic text, which are different from the orthography used in normal Arabic script. Of course, I'll give you some of the examples, but uh, it'll take a lot of time to speak to you about all these signs. The first sign, or the first uh, difference, you see, Ah, Hamza plus Alif, we write like this in more no, normal script, for example, Adam, we write like this. Amana, we write like this. But in the Quranic script, it's Hamza plus Alif. Ah, because Ah means Hamza plus Alif. Just like Ba is Ba plus Alif, Ta is Ta, ta plus Alif. So Hamza plus Alif is Ah. So we write like this in the Quranic script, not like this. Now, if it's Lam Alif, if the Hamza is placed on top of the Alif, it is Hamza followed by Fatha, it is Ah. For example, Al Amnu. But please note, if it is placed between the two lines here, it is Hamza plus Fatha plus Alif. Ah. Did you get that? Yes, because it is as if it is uh, Alif, it's like this, Alif plus, uh, uh, Hamza plus Alif, this is Hamza plus Alif. But if it's placed here, it is only Hamza followed by Fatha. This is Hamza, Fatha plus Alif, Akhiratu. This information you will not find any, even in, in, the, in the pages they have written about this, they have not written this. So this is al Akhiratu. Azif, azifatil azifatu. So it will be written, the Hamza will be here between the two lines, not on top of the. Yeah. Now, Sukun in the Mushaf is like this, which is actually the head of Jim, Jazm. Jazm means cutting, that is removing the bubble. Ajrun, for example. So this is. Head of Jim, which has been, of course, later on simplified to this. In normal Arabic, this is the Sukun. 
But this in Arab in the Quranic script, a small circle, means a letter which is not pronounced. Please remember this. Like Amanu. This alif is not pronounced. Ulaika. The wow is not pronounced. Ulul Arham. Ulul Albab. The wow is not pronounced. So Ulu will be written like this. Ulu. Ulaika also. The wow will have. Now there is another version of this circle. It's elongated. This is complete circle. This is elongated. This is usually placed on the word ana, but there are also a few more words. This means that the alif is not pronounced in continuous reading. But it is to be pronounced in the pausal form. When you pause, ana, you read the alif, pronounce the alif. But ana Muhammadun, ana Talibun, then you don't pronounce the alif you, as if it is hamza plus noon fatha, ana, not ana. So it has two two pronunciations: one in pausal form where Alif is pronounced, Ana, Manja'a, who came, Ana, with the Alif pronounced, Ana, but Ana Ji'itu, here you don't pronounce, so this elongated uh, uh, circle is placed on, on this word and there are other words also. Now, if you have like this, noon without a sukun, the next letter has a shadda. Noon has no sukun, and the following first letter has a shadda, that means noon is assimilated in the next word, the following letter. So you pronounce, you don't pronounce min rabbika, you say mir rabbika. Mil ladun, min ladun, mil ladun. Noon has no sukun, no, 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 no sukun, and the first letter following it has a shadda. The next no has no sukun, but the first, the following letter has no shadda. Here it is partial assimilation. This is complete assimilation, mir rabbika. Noon completely is lost. It becomes ra. If it is followed by lam, it becomes lam mil ladunka. But if there is no shadda, Noon has no sukoon, but the following letter has no shadda. It means it is partial assimilation. Idham naqas. How do you pronounce it? You say, Mai yaqul. The noon, nasality of the noon is there. Mai yaqul. Mewwal. Mewwal. It's not may yaqul, mewwal, no. With na, the nasal quality of the noon is retained and there is idgham, idgham, which is naqis, which is incomplete idgham. Now, as you know, tanween is actually noon sakina. You say kitabun, you should have written ba, dhamma, noon sakina. But we don't write like this. We double the Dhamma. Kitabun. Kitaban. Kitabin. So the Tanwin is actually, what is it? It is noon Sakina. 
So, what applies to Noon Sakina here also applies to Tanwin. How to differentiate between the Tanwin? If there is Idram or not? You follow me? Here, the Fatha, second Fatha is placed right on top of the first Fatha. Here, the Kasara, second Kasara is placed right below the first Kasara. Vamma also, this is simplified. Vamma also, two Vammas placed one above the other. This is called a Tarkib. A Tarkib means one being placed above the other. Now, this signifies Ilhar, Likulli Qawmin Had. There is no Idram or Ikhfa. Likulli Qawmin Had. Qawmin, you pronounce the noun and its point of articulation. Likulli Qawmin Had. This is called Tatabur. That is one Fatha following the other Fatha. Not being on top of it, but coming after it. Also Kasra. Also Dhamma. This means, this Idram. If it is, next letter has got its Shadda, it means Idram Kamil. And if it has no Shadda, then it is Idram Naqis. There is also what is called al -ikhfa. Have you heard of it? al -ikhfa. al -ikhfa means pronouncing the noon not from the point of articulation of noon, which is behind the upper teeth, but from the point of articulation of the next letter. You have it in English also. I-N, you say in. The N is pronounced from behind the teeth, reach, say in. What do you say? Ink. Do you pronounce the N from the, from behind the teeth? From the calf, the, from the K, from the point of articulation of K. You say ink. That is the ikhfa. In the Quran, in Arabic, you say anqadha. He saved. An Noon will not have sukoon because it is ikhfa. Say an qadha. With k also with kaf, an kalan. Inna ladaina an kalan. This is called al ikhfa. Ikhfa means hiding, hiding the noon, the pronunciation of the noon not from its uh, point of articulation, for, but from the point of articulation of the following letter. In British English, M, when M comes before F, you say comfort, come, you don't say come, comfort. In Arabic also you say anf, nose, you say anf, this is ikhfa, anf. So these are two examples, and later on in the Tajweed class, of course, you will learn this. Ikhfa uh, uh, and Idram, they are indicated by this uh, device. The noon has no sukoon, and the following letter, if it has Shadda, that means it's complete uh, Idram. If it has no Shadda, it is partial ilham or it is ikhfa. With regard to Hamza, I must, uh, I must have told you before that in the ancient Arabic script, this was Hamza. This was Hamza. So if, they, if you write like this, it 
It should be pronounced. How should it be pronounced? Ma. Ma. Hamza. Which means the closure of the glottis. You know, there are vocal cords. Vocal cords. If they come together, together the glottis is closed, then Hamza is pronounced. Ma. But later on, when writing developed, we had wow for long vowel. Ulu. We had ya for long kasra. Long kasra. Fi. Uli. For long fatha, what to do? They employed the hamza. They employed the hamza to indicate what? To indicate the lengthening of fatha. So we want to say ma, mim fatha. We want to say ma, mim plus alif. Okay, but we have already seen that mim plus alif is ma. How to differentiate? So they, what they did, that what they did was this ayin. They cut off the head of the ayin and put it on top of the alif. So if you write the hamza, uh, the top, of the, the head of the ayin, it is hamza. If you don't write, then it is alif. Alif means what? Lengthening of the fatha. So to differentiate between the original function of, uh, of alif, the secondary function of alif, they had to differentiate. So the hamza, the ayin, the head of the ayin was placed on the alif to indicate hamza, and without the head of the ayin, it was alif. Alif means lengthening of the fatha. So ma was mim alif, and ma was mim alif with the head of the ayin. In the beginning, ancient texts, you don't have the, the hamza. It was a later development. That is why if, uh, if you see the Indian and Pakistani Quran, you will not find Hamza. It is the ancient system, so there is no Hamza. But later on, Hamza was added. So we have uh, in this, most of the Quran published in the uh, Middle East, we have Alif always with a Hamza. If the Hamza is at the beginning of a word, it is either placed on top of Alif or below the Alif. When top of the Alif, if the Hamza has Fatha or Dhamma. For example, Abun, the Hamza is on top of the Alif. Ummun, also on top of the Alif. But Ibratun, needle. Ibrahim, which we place below the alif. This is a normal Arabic script. Alif has, the Hamza has two positions, on top of the alif or below the alif, only the first Hamza. But in the Mus'haf, Quranic orthography, Hamza wherever comes, if it has Kasra, it will come below the Ya. Yeah. Uh, below the, either below the Alif, or below the Ya, or below the Waw. So, we say, Ula'ika, the Waw will have this circle, Alif, Hamza will be written below the Ya. And even if Hamza comes with the Alif, at the end of the word, it will be written below the Alif. 
So this is the speciality of the Quranic orthography. And also, Lu'i. Wow. Hamza comes below the wow because it is, it, it is, it is at Kasra. Yes. So that is one of the speciality, but not in the normal Quran, normal Arabic script, we will write Hamza on top of the Alif, only at the beginning, below the Alif, only the beginning of a word, not, the, not at the middle. Malaika, for example, Malaika, we will write the Hamza on top of the Ya, not below the Ya. Now this, uh, I told you about this Madda, this is called Madda. Madda means stretching. Madda yamuddu, to stretch. And Maddatun is the, the, the sign of stretching. The, now in the Quranic uh, Arabic, there is an extra lengthening of the vowels. Long vowels. Long vowels are what? Fatha, uh, Alif, Waw, Ya. Yeah. Kitabun, Alif. Fi, is Ya. Yeah. And Qu, Anfusakum, Qu, is Waw. And long vowels are equal to two short vowels. So, Kitabun, Ma, for example, Meme has got ma, one, one, one fatha, ma, it equals to the, the length of period as two fathas. The same way, fi, fi, two kasras, fu, two vamas. But in the Quran, Quranic Arabic, there are certain situations where these fatha, alif, waw, and ya, receive extra lengthening. And this extra lengthening is shown by this sign. Okay. When does the, when do the long vowels receive extra lengthening? Two things. Number one, when they are followed by a Hamza. When they are followed by a Hamza. For example, Ma'un. In normal Arabic we say Ma'un. But in the Quranic Arabic we say Ma'un. Either four vowels or six vowels. Ma'un. Ja'a. And that is to bring out the Hamza, otherwise the Hamza will get lost. Ma'un. Hamza is a very, uh, very difficult sound to be pronounced. So it has to be brought out, pronounced uh, clearly. So the vowel is lengthened. Maun ja wow suun ya ji a. So this vowel, the madda in in Quranic orthography, signifies extra lengthening. It does not signify hamza plus alif. Ja, Su'un, Ji'a. If you hear an Imam saying, Fa, lengthening. What do you expect? Is it Fa, Isun, or Fa, Sikun? It must be Fa, Isun, because Hamza. It can't be Fa, Sikun. Fasikun without lengthening. Fasikun, but fa izun. This is the first thing. Second, when the alif wawiyah are followed by 
a sakin letter. Dabbatun. There are two bees, two bars. The first has what? Sukun. Dabbatun. Waladhalin. Lam has, there are two lambs. First lam is sakin, the second lam has kasra. There are certain letters of Arabic whose name ends in sukun. Like this letter, noon. Noon, wa, noon. What is the last letter? Noon. Sakin or mutharrik? Sakin. So it also has letting noon in the Quran. Qaf, Kaf, Ha. Ha, ha does not end in sukun. Ha. Like in Kaf, Ha. Ya. No sukun. Ain. There is sukun. Saad. There is sukun. So extra lengthening. The letter, uh, the alif wawiya receive extra lengthening if they are followed by what? Hamza or sakin letter. A sukun. So the sign of lengthening, extra lengthening is this one. Please don't confuse this with normal Arabic madda, like Adam. We don't, we write Adam like this. But ma'un, dabbatun, dabbatun should also have the madda. Here one more point. If the alif, wawiya, are in one word and the Hamza is another word. Then you have got a choice. Either to lengthen or not to lengthen. For example, ma in. Ma alif in Hamza. You have got the choice either to lengthen it or not to lengthen it. In Indian Mushaf, Indian Pakistani, there are two types of madda. A very heavy madda like this is for the, the one which you have to pronounce, and a light madda like this for the one which is where you have the choice. But in the Middle Eastern uh, Mushaf, there's only one type of madda. And then <clears throat> the differentiation you have to be uh, learned by the uh, reader. I think these are some of the very important points that you must learn. Suffice with this and go back and, and go to the Alamatul Waqf, the punctuation marks. <clears throat> the punctuation marks. which are called Alamat al-Waqf. One, two, three, four, five. These are the five signs that are used in the Medina Mushaf. Very simple and easy to understand. Meem stands for Waqf Lazim. Waqf Lazim. That's compulsory pause. Lazim. If you don't stop there, don't make a pause, 
the meaning may change. I'll give an example. The ayah, إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ Then comes, وَالْمَوْتَى يَبْعَثُهُمُ اللَّهُ إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ Only those who hear, respond. إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ Only those respond who hear. وَالْمَوْتَى يَبْعَثُهُمُ اللَّهُ and the dead, Allah will raise them up. If we don't stop here, that means those who hear and the dead respond. So the meaning changes. So there are a few places where you will find mean, which means you have to make a stop. It is compulsory, mandatory. Jim means waqf jaiz. Jaiz, it is permissible to stop either you pause or you don't pause. It doesn't make much difference. This is a short for Al Waqfu Awla. Al Waqfu Awla. Al Waqfu Awla. What does it mean? It's better to pause. Awla is better. Al Waqf means pause al waqfu awla it is better to pause that means it is not wrong to continue it's better to pause the meaning will be clearer if you pause there the second one means is a short for al al waslu awla Al wasl continuation. Al waslu awla continuation is better. It's to continue is better, but if you don't continue, if you pause, make a pause there, is not going to change the meaning. Al waqful jaiz, I have explained to you. And then these three dots written twice, they are called Al Mu'anaqa. Al Mu'anaqatu. It literally means embracing from Unuq. What does unuq mean? Neck. Unuq anaqa means he held him by, by the neck. Put his neck into the into his, into his neck. Mu'anaqa. You will find them in two places, very close to each other. That means if you make a pause at the first sign, don't make a pause at the second sign. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ That's the book. لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ There's no doubt in it. Or you say ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ You don't stop at the first one. You stop at the second one. So <clears throat> these are the uh, most important things that I wanted to explain to you in the text of the Quran. And uh, the time is up. Inshallah, we'll continue later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd.
Brothers and sisters, inshallah we'll read the first lesson, Surah Al-Fatiha. First of all, we will listen, listen to a recitation of this uh, surah, uh, inshallah. Now in this surah, the Basmala, that is the formula Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, is part of the surah. With regard to other surahs, there is a difference of opinion, whether it is part of the surah or not. But with regard to Surah Al-Fatiha, it is part of the surah. You notice that Bism, the Alif has been omitted. And the, 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 the word is Ism, which starts with a, which commences with a Hamzat al-Wasl. There are some ten nouns in Arabic which start, which commence with a Hamzat al-Wasl. You have learned some of them, Ism and uh, Ibn, yes. In the same way, Ibnatun, feminine of Ibn is Ibnatun. So the other words, inshallah, you will learn later, but they are very important. But with verbs, of course, there is a rule. But verbs having five letters or six letters, uh, the the hamza is hamza al wasl, like in kasara, in, in taqama, uh, the the madi, like in kasara, in kisarun, masdar, in kasir, amr, in sarafa, in sarifu, in sarif. So, istaqbala, istaqbilu, istiqbal, mazdar, has no, is hamzat al-wasl, and istaqbil, amr, has also hamzat al-wasl. So, in verbs, it is regular. Arabs call it sama'a qiyasi. Qiyasi means based on a rule. Sama'i, sama'i is hearing, based on hearing, there is no rule. So there are about ten nouns, out of which I have mentioned Ibn, Ism, and uh, Ibn. Hamzat al-Wasl actually has been imported, because the word starts with a sukun. And in Arabic, is not permitted to start with a sukun. Of course, in English language, you have star, for example, speed. So you can start with the sukun, but in Arabic it's not allowed. So once a word starts with the sukun, you have to import an alif. This imported alif is called Hamzatul Wasl. It drops the moment there is another letter preceding it, which will prop, support it, you drop the. So you say ismuhu, or you say masmuhu. The, uh, the, the meme, the fatah of the meme suffices. So there is no need for the imported alif. Masmuhu. Bismihi. So the, the kasra of ba that supports the, the beginning. But usually the alif is retained in writing. But in the Quran, especially in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Basmala, it is omitted because of its constant use. It is omitted, but there are, I have given example, Fasabbih Bismi Rabbika al where Alif is retained. There is no rule about it in the Quran. Sometimes it is retained, sometimes it is retained, and it is not retained because it is not pronounced when it is preceded by another word. But when it starts a word, of course you have to retain it. The word Allah is a proper name and some people say it is derived from Aliha to, uh, to be a surprise or something like that. But uh, the, uh, the, the considered opinion is that it is a proper name, it is not derived. And the Alif Lam at the beginning 
uh, is it looks like Alif Lam, uh, which is the definite article, but it's not a definite article. It's not a definite article. Of course, it's omitted. The Alif is omitted. Uh, for example, Lillahi, Billahi. I don't know how to pronounce. But in one case, the Alif is retained. It's Ya Allah. Ya Allah. You don't say Ya Allah. You have to say Ya Allah. The Alif is retained. Hamzat al-Wasl is retained in this case. But in other cases, it is omitted. When you write Lillah, Allahu, if you want to write Lillahi, for Allah, or belonging to Allah, what do you do? You just omit the alif, it becomes Lillah. But in India and Pakistan, you will find Lillah written like this, with another lam, which is wrong. There are a lot of mistakes in the Indian subcontinent with regard to Arabic, prevalent there, and unfortunately nobody corrects them, and uh, so one of them is this, Lilla, writing, it's being written with three lams, which is wrong. So if you want to write Lilla, just remove the alif, it becomes Lilla. So Ya Allah, Hamzatul Wasl is pronounced Hamzatul Qatar. If you remember, Hamzatul Wasl or Hamzatul Qatar. Hamzatul Qatar is pronounced always like Anta, Ana, wa Anta. But Ibnun, Hazabni, you say Hazabni, Aina Bunuka, Masmuka, the Alif is omitted. And in the Mus'haf, the Hamzatul Alama, the, the sign of Hamzatul Wasl is always written. In normal Arabic orthography, it's not written. Only in certain cases to show or to teach. But normally, the sign, which is called uh, Sila, is omitted. But in the Mus'haf, somebody asked me the meaning of Mus'haf. So I'll explain to you. Al-Quran and Mus'haf, we have got two words. Mus'haf is the, the, the printed form of the Qur'an, or the written form of the Qur'an. That's why you can speak of, I have uh, Mus'haf, I've got a Pakistani Mus'haf, I've got a Saudi Mus'haf, I have a German Mus'haf, but you can't say, I've have got, I have got a Pakistani Qur'an, no. In Arabic, we say, Indi Mus'haf Kabirun, or Mus'haf Sagirun. I've got a large copy, that's my copy. And the Mus'hafun Pakistaniyun. Mus'hafun Saudiyun. We won't know it's a Quran. We say, Ja'a fil Qur'ani. Ja'a fil Quran. Quran, it has, it's used in the Quran. But when you speak of spelling, you say, it's written like this in the Mus'haf. Because it, it, it has to do with writing. So there, there's a difference. The, the Egyptians don't use the word Quran because Qaf for them is a problem. They can't pronounce Qaf, so they <coughs> make it Hamza in Muslim. But in the Quran, they don't want to make it Hamza, so they avoid using the word Quran. They say Mus'haf always, which sometimes leads to misunderstanding. So it should be Mus'haf for the written. A printed form and Quran for the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, you see the Hamza, Hamza al-Wasl, always in the Quran written with Hamza, uh, Hamza al-Wasl, the Sla. Uh, it's a small sod, the word, uh, the head of the letter sod, which is written to uh, indicate that it is to be joined, not to be separated. We have the verb Rahima Yarhamu. Rahima Yarhamu. To pity, to show mercy. Rahmatun, Mazdar. There are other Mazdars also. 
Barhamatun is Master Mimi. You must have learned Master Mimi. Barhamatun. And the word Rahim. Rahimun Arhamun. Rahimun is the womb of, in which the child is uh, formed. It's Rahimun. And plural is Arhamun. Rahima Yarhamu. Rahima, which group is this? Sami Asma. In my book, I use it Ea group. Ea group, yes. So, Sami Asma wa Ea group, Rahima Yarhamu. Ismul Fa'il is Rahimun. But you know, Rahima is an action which does not have a beginning and an end. It's a continuous process. Rahima is to pity, to show mercy. So in, in, in this case, for example, Samia, you have a beginning and an end. You hear and then you stop hearing. Akala, you have a beginning and an end. Shariba, you have. But Marida, he fell sick. You can't say in which point of time he fell sick. So you don't have ismul fa'il from verbs which do not have a beginning and an end in, 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 in point of time. You have rahimun, but uh, that's not very often used. Rahimun, one who shows mercy. But the word rahimun, you know the word fa'il, the, the pattern fa'il shows an inherent quality that is uh, in the person. Like uh, karimun, noble. This nobility does not uh, start and end. Sakhiyun, generous. So rahimun. It's a Ismul Mubalagha, Sirat Mubalagha, and also Rahman. As you have seen before, the, the, the pattern Fa'alan uh, signifies a momentary action. Atshan, Atshan, thirsty. Jawan, hungry. Ghadban, angry. All momentary actions. Mostly, not Kaslan. Kaslan is a <laughs> continuous process. <laughs> so, Bismillah uh, rahman rahim there are two aspects of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute of mercy. It is inherent in him, which is Rahim. And the word Rahman signifies the manifestation of his attribute in time and space. In a particular time, in a particular space, the manifestation will be momentary. It will be time bound. But the, the word Rahim is the inherent quality which is, doesn't get separated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim The next ayah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Hamida Yahmadu, also Ea group, Hamdun, Hamida Yahmadu, Hamidun, Ismul Fa'il, Ismul Fa'il, Mahmudun. The Bafa'ala Hamada means to praise excessively. Muhammada. What will be the Ismail Mafrul from this? Muhammadun. Muhammadun, one who praises excessively. And Muhammadun, one who is praised excessively. So Muhammad is the Ismail Mafrul from Hamada, second conjugation, second form. But from the first form, Hamidun, Ismail Fa'il, Mahmudun, Ismail Mafrul. Now with regard to Al, we have learned in the 
book, that it is definite article, but there are different uh, three kinds of al, which will, which I will explain now. The one that we have already learned is called alif lam al ahdiya. Al-Flam al-Ahdiyya. Al-Ahd means reference, previous knowledge, acquaintance. So Al-Flam al-Ahdiyya refers to a thing that is already known to you. Known to you and known to your listeners or readers. If you are reading a book, when I speak to a man and say, Ja'ar Rajulu, the man came. That means you know him. And your listener also knows him. Otherwise, if you say, Ja'ar Rajulu, if you say, he'll say, he'll get confused. Ah, may, may ask you, whom do you mean? So, al ahdiya means, the thing is known to you, and known to your listeners and readers. Now, this knowledge common to you and to your readers and your listeners. The source of this knowledge is three things. One of three things. It's all mentioned in the book, you can see. I'll explain to you. Number one, the thing is right in front of you. So you and your listener know this. Supposing there is a book here, and I tell my listener, Hatil Kitab, give me the book. He knows what you mean, because it's right in front of you. There is a man, maybe very close to you, or maybe a little far away, but you say, Nadi Rajul, Nadi Rajul. What does that mean? Call, Call the man. Nada, Yunadi, Amr, Nadi. Nadi Rajul. Call the man. Your listener will understand because he is seeing this man. This is called Al Ahd al Huduri. Al Ahd Al Ahd al Huduri. Al-Huduri means presence. You know him because he is present right in front of you, either the book or the man or whatever it is. So Al-Ahd Al-Huduri. This is one source of common knowledge between you and the listener. The second type is al ahl dhikri The object or the man or the person has been mentioned before, either by you or by the listeners. So, you second time you refer to him. For example, you say, Ja'ani Rajulun. Ja'ani Rajulun. A man came to me. Now here, he is unknown to you. Then, second sentence you say, وَالرَّجُلُوا كَانَ غَضْبَانُ كَانَ غَضْبَانُ The man was angry. Now, الرَّجُلُوا كَانَ الرَّجُلُوا غَضْبَانُ He has already been mentioned, so you know him. So it is called Al-Ahd Al-Zikri. Al-Ahdu Al-Zikriyu. That is knowledge gained by mentioning him or his being mentioned before. 
اشتريت كتابا I bought a book والكتاب مفيد جدا The book is very useful So you already mentioned And then second time you say والكتاب The third type is based of The third type The common knowledge is based on Context On context So when you tell your friend, I'm going to the office, you know which office he, he means, because he, he, he knows that he works in a particular office. We say, I, I, I'll ask the friend, they know which friend he's meant, his previous, from the context, they were different. Supposing in a grammar class, there's a question in grammar. So the students, one of the students says, Nas'alu shaykha, Nas'alu shaykha, we'll ask the teacher. That means the grammar teacher, not the, the Quran teacher. Because the context determines what you mean. But in the Quran class, we say, Nas'alu shaykha, that means the Quran teacher. So that is called al ah al zihni Al-Ahdu Al-Zihniyu Zihni Mental So all these three types are Alif Lam al ahdiya Referential Alif Lam whether it is based on, the knowledge is based on the presence of the thing or because it has been mentioned before or the context determines it. For example, you say, Naltaqi fil masjid. Naltaqi fil masjid. You will meet in the mosque. You know in which mosque you, you both meet. So, Nina, explain. So, Naltaqi fil masjid. Somebody else, when they say Naltaqi fil Masjid, it's a different mosque, not the same mosque. So it depends upon the context. So this is one type. Another type this is Alif Ba Jim. Number two. Alif Lam Al Jinsiyatu Al Jins means genus. It is the same word, it's a Latin word, genus. Generic. Now, when you use Alif Lam, this type of Alif Lam has nothing to with previous knowledge. It refers to the genus. When, for example, you say Al-Labanu Mufidun Al-Labanu Mufidun Milk is useful. Al-Inabu Agla Min at tuffahi I don't know whether the rates are. Al <laughs> Rinabu, <laughs> the grapes, the grapes are agla, more expensive, than the apples. Means the, the, the genus. Not a particular thing which I know, you know. It means what, what is known as Rinab, what is known as Tufah.
this also has two types. One type is known as الاستغراق الجنس. ألف لام الجنسية الاستغراق الجنس. I'll explain to you. It means when you say al al rajulu, it means every member of the genus. Sometimes, not always. For example, you say, Al insanu yamutu. Al insanu yamutu. Man dies. Does it mean every insan? Every, every human being? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, Al insanu yamutu. Here, Al insan. Alif lam is Al jinsiya. The stigraq al jins. To comprehend all the members of the genus. In the Quran, Qulika al-insanu da'ifa. Man was created weak. It's every man. How strong he may be, if he has a stroke, it's finished. If he has a heart attack, finished. He can't walk. So every man has been created weak. استغراق الجنس استغراق استغراق which which باب is this باب تام استغرق على استغرق غرق means to uh, to drown to get drowned استغرق استغرق means to to be completely covered استغراق الجنس example as I told you Al-insan yamutu, man dies, it means every man dies. All, all, all human beings die. The second one is libayan <clears throat> al-haqiqa. It points only to the, the, uh, the fact. Not, it doesn't uh, comprehend all the numbers. For example, الرجال أقوى من النساء. الرجال men are stronger than women. Does it include all men and all women? No, no. Yeah, some women are stronger than men. Yeah. So it's a it's to uh, to state the fact generally as a rule, but doesn't. In, uh, refer to every member of the genus. Libayanil Haqiqa. Here, Al Insanu. Yamutu. Arrijalu. Aqwa. Mina. Now we come to the third type, which is called al azaida, extra l, extra l. Is it clear now? The istighraq al jins means you can use the word every instead of al. Kullu insanin yamut. If you say like that. It will be correct. But in the other sense, and in the other example, you can't say. 
كل الرجال اقوى من النساء you can say the third type is al zaidatu extra al This means that certain words, Arabic words, have al, which cannot be separated. They don't mean anything. For example, you say al-ladhi, you got al there. Al-ladhi, al-lati, al-ladhani, there's al. In the same way you have al-qahiratu, the Cairo, which has got al-qahiratu. Some countries, names of human beings, countries. Now Pakistan, some Arabs say Pakistanu, some Arabs say Al-Pakistan. So they <coughs> add Alif La. But certain countries, there is consensus. Al-Brazil, Al-Brazil. Al-Yaban, Al-Yaban. They don't remove Al from Yaban, Al Yaban. Al Hind. Al Hind is very old, ancient, from the pre Islamic times, they say Al Hind. So these are extra Alif Lam. You can't remove them, they don't have a special meaning, they don't add to the meaning as we have seen in other places. But there is one type which may add to the meaning. And that is names of persons, human beings. You may add Alif Lam to suggest that he has a quality which is contained in the name. For example, there is a name Asad, proper name. Asad, what does it mean? Lion. Lion. Some say, some, some, it's very common, they say Al-Asad, Ja Al-Asad. If you use Al-Asad, you want to suggest that it has got the qualities of a lion. To suggest, Al-Fadlun, Fadlun is uh, favor. You also say Al-Fadlu show that he has got this quality. Abbasun. What does Abbas mean? Frowning. What do I mean? Abbas is a is from Walaga. Always with a frowning face. Abbasun. Abbasa ya Abbasu. Abbasa wa tawalla. Abus. Abus is also one who is always frowning. <coughs> in, the, in the Quran, the day of judgment they refer to as Abus and Qamtarira. It's a frowning day. So <clears throat> Abbas, the, the, one of the uncles of the Prophet, وسلم, Abbas. Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. We all say Al Abbas, Ja al Abbas. We say Ja al Abbasu, you refer to you want to suggest that he is frowning, he is angry. So this is uh, one of the types of extra al, which has some meaning, which has meaning. But here also, one does not have a choice to always use, you know, but it's uh, limited to the Arab use of this al. We, for example, we, we don't say al Muhammad. We never say this. But Al Abbas, Al Fadl, Al Asad. Mostly when they want to refer to the qualities that the word suggests, you can add Al. Now in Al Hamdu, if you see the Urdu translations or even some of the English translations, we will say Al Hamdu means all types of of praise. This is al istighraq al jiz al alif lam al Alhamdu. Here al is not the this type. 
This is the generic uh, al. So al alhamdu means all types of uh, of praise. There is muqtada alhamdu. Khabar, where is the khabar? Lillahi. Lillahi. Shiva jumla. Alhamdulillahi. Belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people translate, may, may all praise be to Allah. This is your wish. But that's not right. Allah, uh, the praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He deserves it. You need not wish it. So, all praise belong to Allah. And then, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Rabb Al Alameen is Badal of Allah. Alhamdulillah, who is Allah? Rabbil Alameen, Badal. And you know, Badal is Arab Tabi'ah. It follows the Mubdal Minhu, whether it is Mansoom, Majroon, Marfur, it will follow the, for example, Rai to Muhammadan, Rai to Akhaka Muhammadan. I saw your brother Muhammad. Aina Akhuka Muhammadun. Salam to Allah Akhika Muhammadin. So the Badal follows the Mubdal Minhu in its grammatical cases. <coughs> Here is the same case as the uh, as the Mubdal Minhu. Rabbil uh, Alamin Rab has got Purur also Arbabun. Rabbun Arbabun Lords. Arbabun. It also has a feminine form Rabbatun. <coughs> Rabbatul Bayti means housewife. The lady of the house. <laughs> Rabbatul Bayti. It's not a modern expression. It is not a modern expression. It is a poet belonging to the Abbasid period. Abu Nuwas. He has a couplet. His, he had a maid at home. And she said, you write Qasidas, you write odes in praise of the kings and the, the, the ministers. Why don't you write something about me? So he said, okay, I'll write. He said, Rababatu Rabbatul Bayti. Rababa, her name. He said, Rababatu Rabbatul Bayti. Rabbatul Bayti is the old expression. Rababa is the, the housewife. Rababatu Rabbatul Bayti. Tasubbu al-khalla fi zayti Tasubbu, what does tasubbu mean? Sabba ya subbu. To pour. To pour. Sabba ya subbu. Tasubbu al-khalla fi zayti Khal, what does it mean? No, khallun. Who knows? Tasubbu al-khalla fi zayti Al-khal is vinegar. <laughs> Al-khal. <laughs> Al-khal. There is a hadith, Khayrul idami al-khal. Khayrul idami al-khal. The best... Uh, uh, yes, idam, what is idam? Idam is a companion of the bread. Whatever is uh, eaten with the bread, it is either salan or whatever it is. Yeah. Yes. Khairul idami al khallu. Vinegar is the best companion of the bread. Tasubbu al khalla fi zayti. In oil. She, she pours. I don't know what happens. <laughs> Then you make vinegar and put it on the palate. <laughs> <laughs> they said, Rababatu, Rabbatu al Tasubbu al Khalla, Fizayti, Laha Ashru Dajajati. She had ten seconds. Laha Ashru Dajajati, Wadikun Hassan al Sauti. With the beautiful voice. 
Yes, and a rooster with a beautiful voice. Aina. Rababat Rabbatul Bayti, Tasubul Khalla, Fiz Zayti, La Ashru Dajajatin, Wadikun Hasanu Sauti. Hasanu Sauti. So I say, I want to tell you that this is a uh, very old expression, Rabbatul Bayt, and even today it is used, Rabbatul Bayt, meaning in, in the forms which you get to fill in, you, you, some, some ladies write, Rabbatul Bayt, Rabbatul Baytin, as a housewife. Arbab, I have given you ayat in which uh, I, uh, Arbab is being used. Let us read this ayah. Ah, in page 10. On page 10. Ya sahibayis, ya sahibayis sijni. A arbabun mutafarrikuna khayrun amillahu al-wahid al-qahar. Ya sahibay as sijn. Oh, my two companions. Two companions of the, uh, of the prison. Two companions who are in the prison. Arbabun mutafarrikuna khayrun. Where is the Muptada? Arbabun. But it's, it's uh, in, indefinite. Can you have an indefinite uh, noun as a Muptada? It's a question. Hmm? It's, a question. it's a question. And also it is, it is, it is ma, 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 Man'ut. Mm-hmm. Man'ut, indefinite noun can be a Muptada. Arbabun mutafarriqoon. Arbabun mutafarriqoon. Are diverse lords better than Allah? Arbabun mutafarriqoon. Khayrun amillahu al-wahidu al-qahhar. Allah the Almighty. Qul li ahl al-kitabi. Ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum. Say. Oh, this is addressed to the Prophet ﷺ. Ya Ahl al-Kitabi, O oh, people of the book, people of the scripture, that is Jews and Christians. Ta'alaw ila kalimatin. Come to a common term. Ta'alaw ila kalimatin. Sawain. Sawain is common. Bainana wa bainakum. Common between you and us. That is, Muslims and Christians, Muslims and Jews, they have this concept. An la na'buda illa Allah. That we do not worship except Allah, anybody else except Allah. That is a common thing. Wala nushrika bihi shay'a. And we do not associate anyone with him. Wala yattakhidha ba'aduna ba'adun arbaba bin dunillah. And that some of us do not take others as lords. Wala yattakhidha ba'aduna ba'adun arbaba. Uh, see, ba'aduna, ba'adu is subject, fa'il, when ba'adun is maful bihi first. Second maful is arba'ab. Ittakhadha takes two objects, two maful bihi. Ittakhadtuhu khalilan. I have taken him as my friend. Follow me? So, ittakhadha ba'aduna, ba'adun. Some of us, others, arba'aban min dunillah. Other than Allah, we take, take them or treat them as lords and follow their commandments. Fa'in tawallaw. If they turn back, turn away, faqulu, tell them, faqulu shhadu bi anna muslimun, bear witness that we are, <coughs> we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So another ittakhidhu ittakhadhu ahbarahum wa ruhbanahum arbaban they betook they have taken ahbarahum their scholars wa ruhbanahum and their monks rahib singular is rahibun rahib plural ruhbanun ruhbanun ahbarahum وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا Lords, مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَذَنَ اللَّهِ وَالْمَسِيحَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ and Christ, the son of Mary. They have also taken him as Lord. Okay. So, رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ 
alam is universe world it is from ali ma ya'lamu ali ma ya'lamu which uh, group samia samia yes ya yeah, group ali ma ya'lamu to know alam there are a few words that come on on the measure of fa'al with the fatha fa'il of course you know it's on fa'il fa'al means a means of knowing alam alam is a means of knowing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the universe In the same we have khatamun khatama yakhtimu is to stamp seal khatamun is the means of sealing the instrument of sealing khatamun alamun is like that sound masculine plural which end in waw noon in mas in marfu' fam and ya noon and majrur and mansub cases this has a rule not all nouns for example rajulun you can't say rajulun kitabun you can say kitabun <laughs> so what is the rule there are two types of nouns which take this form waw noon form the first is proper names proper names for example muhammadun you can say al muhammaduna Ahmadu, say Al Ahmaduna. Please note here that when a proper name becomes plural, it takes Alif Lam. Why? Because there is no more a proper name. If there are ten people, ten persons called Muhammad, all of them Muhammad, you can't pinpoint them. So they they become ordinary. it doesn't remain a proper name so the moment you make plural of proper names you must add alif lam ahmadu plural is al ahmaduna ibrahim al ibrahimuna so proper names can take there of course certain exceptions nouns with uh, ta marbuta hamza you can't say al hamzuna there are some rules exceptions but ordinary proper names they take alif lam uh, the vowel note this first type second type is uh, derived nouns referring to human uh, male human beings male human beings like mudarrisun is a derived noun ismul fa'il or ismul maf'ul mah a man praise worthy man mahmud you can say haulai mahmuduna they are praise worthy salihun pious good say salihuna mudarrisun mudarrisuna muhandis engineer muhandisuna so a derived noun but referring to you a human being, male human being so feminine proper name we have feminine uh, plural we have alifta so this is only for males so for example you have haidun or murdi'un hamilun hamilun is pregnant we can't say hamiluna because this is a first you a human being but feminine human being should be masculine human being uh, so that's the rule but there are certain nouns which take the waw noon and ya noon uh, as an exception one of them is alam al alam rule is al alamuna worlds creations it is a broken plural also alamun awalimu awalimu also used but the more uh, the, the frequently used is alamuna alamuna is marfu' majrur mansub is alamina 
رب العالمين خلق الله العالمين مفعول به خلق الله العالمين there are other nouns also sanatun what does it mean here yeah. sanatun has got sanawatun feminine plural, uh, feminine plural sanawatun also sinuna wow noon sinuna but sin has got kasra here sanatun has got fatha but sinuna has kasra sinuna mansoob majroor form is sinina for example you say marrat sinuna many years have passed marrat marra yamurru marrat sinuna we've one with a sinin yes ishtu fil madinati al munawwarati sinina i lived in madina for years sinina so sanatun sinuna and another ahlun people or household people ahlun it also has they of course it has a broken plural ahalin but also we have regular and masculine plural ahluna ahluda ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu qu anfusakum save yourselves wa ahlikum and your household an nar هو انفسكم و اهليكم so where is the noon gone اهليكم اهلونا اهلينا and because of اضافه اهليكم يعني قو انفسكم قو Who is from what word? Huh? Waqa yaqi. Waqa yaqi. Al-amr is qi. Qi. Yes. There is a there is a joke told about not a joke it's a story told about one of the ancient during the Abbasid period. There was a uh, there was a professor or a teacher who was teaching Arabic grammar at a mosque there was another teacher of a inferior quality and he did not like this man there were many students with him so he didn't like he had a sort of jealous about him so he went to the police and said there is a, a mad man in the mosque you must uh, remove him from the mosque mad he said how do you know so i have heard him uttering things you know which are nonsensical the policeman said okay i i must ascertain myself so he said okay you come to to me to him in such a place at such a such a time so he went there this uh, the, the other teacher went to him and said say sheikh what is the amr from waqa i said t he said how to uh, please tell me with the isnad with the he said t ya q qiqiyaqina he said we can you repeat it he said qiqiyaqu qiqiyaqina please another time the policeman came <laughs> where did you hear him what is saying <laughs> this is uh, madman's uh, no utterance qiqiyaqu qiqiyaqina yes so <coughs> so qa waqa yaqi the in the amr the amr the waw is lost first radical and the third radical is also lost in mudhari the first is lost and the amr is second is the third is lost so only qi qi qu anfusakum qu takes two objects rabbana atina fid dunya wa qina adhab an nar na is the first object adhab an nar adhaba is the second object waqina adhab an nar 
So, Qu anfusakum, save yourselves, wahlikum and your household, nara. This is the second object. I think we stop here and continue, inshallah, tomorrow. The time is up. Wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.